All right, designers, I promise you this video is gonna be even shorter than the last. Everyone's gonna get a little bit faster here. Uh, we're gonna talk about logo design, but there is an embedded video here. I am not gonna force you to watch it, but if you wanna geek out or if you feel like you need a little bit more background, feel free to stop this video, watch this video on the art of logo design and come on back here when you're done. All right, so what are some of the do's and don'ts? But before we do that, and again, another embedded video if you wanna watch, not gonna make you watch it. Um, with logos and logo types, if you look here, it, there are some tried and true guidelines for logos. There's no one way to think about a logo though. And logos are evolving because of technology. And this video talks about a little bit about the evolution of logos and, and where they might be going in the, for, in the future, especially when you look at systematic logo design where you're able to make changes to the logo which is something new and that has to do more with technology. But if you're kind of interested to see maybe where logo design is going to be going in the next few years, if you are thinking about studying this uh, in college, you might want to watch this video. But we're going to talk about, generally speaking, what are some of the basic things you need to think about um, as you're creating a logo? So the first things you need to know is that logos are not the only part of the brand, but they're super important. And they're one of the first things that gets developed in that corporate identity. And that's why we're starting with them first. After you've done your brand identity worksheet where you've decided what your company stands for and you've identified what colors you think you need to use and what shapes you think you need to use, um, you're gonna start developing the logo first and that's why we're starting here. Once a company establishes their logo, it's not gonna change very often. Now, it might evolve over time. So I have the example of Pepsi. You're gonna see some big jumps, okay? Um, but primarily speaking, once you kind of get it ingrained, notice it's, it's only getting updated, so to speak, right? It's, it's not getting completely changed, and they do it just to evolve it with the times, but they're not going to completely scratch it unless, like I said, the BP oil situation where they have a scandal, they need to completely rebrand for some reason. Most companies are just going to update their logos um, and their color choices. So you need to know the difference between a logo and a logo type. You're going to be designing both, even though not every company does a logo. Some companies will only do a logo type, okay? Every company does a logo type. Think of it as like their word mark, their watermark. It's their company name and a specific typeface that they've created or selected. A lot of times they create their own. Um, so every company will have these, but not every company has a logo. Lots of them do because it's it's easy to slap those things on things and it's another way to kind of brand things into your head. But if a company comes up with a logo, they're still gonna come up with a logo type as well, um, but that might change more over time. But we're gonna be doing both a logo and a logo type. So here's our basic six guidelines as it applies uh, to logo creation. Number one, get this in your notes, a logo is one to three colors max. Now, my, you might say, but, 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 but Google, yes, I know. Google is one of those few outliers that's going to break a lot of these things because of the uniqueness of the product, right? But most logos, most companies are going to do one to three colors. Why? For a variety of reasons. Number one, it makes it easier to reproduce. Number two, it makes it more easy to control the corporate identity because you're only dealing with three different color formulas. And number three, it makes it easier to brand it in people's head. If it's not a bazillion different colors, if it's one to three colors, they're going to recall it faster, right? No, rule number two says it needs to be simple. Again, for two reasons. Number one, it's easier to remember. That Nike swish is so iconic because it's one simple shape. The more complex it is, I know it doesn't sound like it, but it's harder to remember. The other thing is, the more simple you make it, you can shrink that thing down, you can blow it up. It makes it more user friendly. If you have a super complex logo and you shrink it down, like say that Starbucks logo, it becomes less effective as a logo because you can't literally can't see it versus that Nike, which is why Nike, that Nike logo has not changed since the early 70s, guys has not changed at all because it is about as perfect as you can get when it comes to logos. It is so iconic, it is so branded in, and it says so much about the company in a very simple shape. So hard to do, right? But you can shrink it down on the tiniest, tiniest little things and you can still make out that Nike logo. So you want your logos to be simple. 
okay? Think about them in terms of shapes, not lots of little lines, okay? They're shapes, not little drawings. Number three, you wanna avoid trends if at all possible, why? Because you don't want to have to change this thing three years from now. So you don't want to have to pick up on something that's trendy, especially like, especially with typefaces. Because you guys have already learned like typefaces, they go in and out of fashion. Colors go in and out of fashion. So you want to stick with some very classic kind of things that still kind of get your message across. You want to be careful of not kind of creating a logo that stays stuck in a time period. So when you look at it, you're like, oh, that's from the 80s, that's from the 2000s, whatever it is. It's iconic, it's classic, it's never gonna go out of style, all right? Aim for distinction or to be different. What that means is, and this is why one of the first things you will do is you will do some research in your company's competition. So you're gonna, if you are, again, I'm gonna go back to my example of a shoe company. If I'm a shoe company, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the corporate identities of other shoe companies. Why? Because I don't want my logo to look anything like anybody else's. I don't want to get confused. I don't wanna have my consumers be confused. I wanna stand out. I wanna be different. So you've gotta first start by looking at who's around you because you want that, that distinction from the other colors, uh, other companies. Now, I point out here um, steak and shape and the mini coop for one reason you might be like whoa those look really similar and I would say yes they do I don't know which one came first but I I would have stayed away like I think one was like uh if they did their, their research I would have said stayed away from that design a little bit however the only reason it's not a major issue is because they're two completely different corporations with completely different products. One is a car company, the other is a fast food chain, right? So there's probably not gonna be a lot of confusion there. Now, I still think it's one of those, I think somebody dropped the ball because they should have noticed, hey, my Mini Coop logo now looks like Steak and Shake, right? Um, it's just kind of a funny uh, coincidence, so to speak. Number five means your attitude and relevance, and this has all and everything to do with that, cake, that shape and color psychology. You have to know how colors and shapes affect people, and you have to know what the unintended symbolism is of those things. For instance, if especially if you're doing an illustrative logo, that means a logo that looks like something, so like the Apple logo versus Nike. Nike is just a shape, right? It's abstract. We don't know what that thing's supposed to be. It's just the swoosh versus Apple, like that's an Apple. Especially if you're doing things that are illustrative in nature, you need to know what that thing symbolizes. Why is Apple computer, why did they pick an Apple? If you said it's because they're Apple computers, you are wrong. The logo actually came before the name or the idea for the logo came before the name Apple Corporation. The Apple in the science community represents enlightenment or a new idea. Why? Because of the supposed wives tale that Sir Isaac Newton, who discovered gravity or the theory of gravity, was sitting under an apple tree, an apple fell, hit, his, hit him on the head, and that's how he came up with the idea of the theory of gravity, right? So Apple Computer uses the apple as a symbol of enlightenment, okay? They're, they've discovered something new. You also have to think about like what directions your shapes and things are going. So think about your attitude and relevance. Again, that's that shape and color psychology, which you're sick of hearing me talk about, I'm sure. Number six says that your logo and logo type need to be unified. So you need to be using the same types of colors, obviously, but you also need to be using the same types of shapes and lines. So Typically speaking, they're gonna do the logo first. If you're a company that's doing a logo and a logo type, you're gonna do the logo first, and then you're gonna pick your logo type. If you're doing this from scratch, some companies have already kind of, they've their name's already out there and so they're working in reverse, but ideally you wanna do your logo first, and then you're picking the font or the typeface that kind of is reminiscent or looks very similar to your logo. You need to make sure you think about them in tandem together, which is why we'll do that in our corporate identity. Like, how do they play together? The Pepsi logo and logo type, they really don't. They look similar, but they're not slapped together versus, um, let me see if I can have one in here. Okay, so like Mini Coop, 
their logo type is actually can be and is often embedded in their logo, but they can take it out and do just the logo. So you want to think about that. Is your logo and logo type going to be combined or can it be combined? Or is it going to be like Pepsi where you're like, uh, no, but they're going to be seen next to each other from time to time. So they should look similar. All right. We're gonna go past that. So your next step is you are going to start to do your thumbnail sketches. And you can do this out of class starting now or you can do it when you get back in class, that's fine. But you are going to be doing some thumbnail sketches. That just means quick sketches. And I'm gonna demo this in class of possible ideas of your shape based on, or excuse me, of your logo based on the shapes that you've determined fit your brand identity. Um, you can, they can be better, can be letter based. Um, or shape based, they can be illustrated, which means they look like little drawings, but keep it simple. If you're gonna do drawing related things like a pencil or whatever, keep it simple. Keep it simple, you guys, keep it simple. Not only because it fits into good logo design, but uh, hello, you're gonna have to do these in Illustrator. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't think most of you guys are whizzes at Illustrator yet, so keep it basic. Keep it simple, something that you can do with the basic shape tools pen tool, the stuff that you've learned thus far, okay? So you're gonna start to do uh, brainstorm basically. These should be quick sketches. You can do it on grid paper if that helps you or you can just do it in your sketchbook. Like I said, they can be image based, but be careful. These ones all are verging on overly um, illustrative. This one is like fine, but when you start getting into stuff like that, it, it gets really tough. Like the more stuff you have, the harder it is to shrink down. So just be cognizant, be aware of that. Don't worry about your colors too much just yet. Uh, we start with the shape and then we'll deal with your colors later. All right, good job. I do think I made it a little bit shorter. Your next video is gonna be the business card lecture, but you do not need to watch that now. That will be later after you get your logo done and your color scheme established in your corporate identity. So when you get back to class, we will have a Google form over this. Make sure your digital notes are complete so that you have that for the quiz when you get back to class.